Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily for July 28, 2011, and European automakers are posting exceptionally strong earnings today. We have the latest numbers for Volkswagen, Renault, and Ferrari. Let's start with VW. These numbers are for the first six months of the year. Under European reporting regulations, corporations do not have to report quarterly earnings. VW sold 4.1 million vehicles, up a strong 14%, which brought in about $108 billion in revenue. That's an amazing amount of money. And even if VW does not sell the most vehicles this year, it could take the number one spot when it comes to revenue. The company also boosted its net profit by a whopping 38% to roughly $9 billion. Meanwhile, Renault reported this morning that it sold more than 1.3 million vehicles in the first half, up by less than 2%. That brought in more than $29 billion, which was up more than 7%, but its net profit of about $1.7 billion was up an astonishing 52%. And Ferrari reported that it sold 3,577 cars in the first half, but that brought in about $1.5 billion, up nearly 20%, and it earned a net profit of about $128 million, up an impressive 23%. Three years ago, GM and Ford were flat on their backs, but now they're investing heavily in emerging markets. Ford will invest $900 million in India to build a new plant that will employ 5,000 people. Ford wants to introduce seven new models in India over the next several years. Currently, it only sells four. And GM announced it will boost its investments in Brazil by more than its current investment in the country of $3.2 billion. That new plan runs through 2017. Speaking of GM, Wards reports the UAW wants a seat on the board of directors. UAW President Bob King says the union would add value because it has a long-term interest in seeing the company succeed. But you know, despite all the lovey-dovey talk between GM and the union, I'll bet the company is not exactly enamored of that proposal. And speaking of labor negotiations, things are not going so smoothly between Hyundai Kia and their workers in Korea. Kia workers rejected a tentative agreement that would have increased bonuses and given workers stock in the company. Workers are unhappy about going from a three-shift to a two-shift schedule. And Hyundai doesn't want to pay union representatives who do not work on the line. You know, a lot of people are not aware that the Detroit Three do pay union representatives who are located in their plants. Hey, happy birthday, Chevrolet! The iconic brand celebrates its 100th anniversary this year. And today it starts a 100-day countdown to November 3rd, the date it was founded. The company has launched a new website to help commemorate the occasion. Chevy100.com. Fans can share stories about their cars, learn of centennial activities, and vote for the best Chevrolet of all time. But one vehicle that's not on the ballot is the 2013 Malibu. It's not even on sale yet, but GM is really gearing up for it. The company hosted an open house this week, highlighting some of the car's features, like its brand new interior. And we're going to have more on the 2013 Malibu in the coming days, so stay tuned. Ford's new Explorer has doubled sales, and now the much-anticipated EcoBoost four-cylinder engine will be available late next month. Output is 240 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque. It should deliver 20 miles per gallon in the city and 20 weight, 28 on the highway. That's up to 8.4 liters per 100 kilometers. And you know, those numbers beat the Honda Pilot, the Chevy Traverse, the Toyota Highlander, and even the Subaru Impreza, which is a compact car. Pretty impressive, but insiders at the company hinted they were actually shooting at 30 MPGs on the highway. Oh, Ford, so close, so close. I'm Seamus McElroy in Seattle, Washington, and coming up, I'll show you the all-new 2012 Versus Sedan. 
Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. Since its introduction in 2006, Nissan has sold over 350,000 Versas in the U.S. At the end of last year, it was the leader in its segment, controlling just over 30% of the compact car market in the U.S. Now the company is set to release an all-new version of the sedan, and here is what's new. Whether you see it in pictures or on television, when you see the Space Needle, you immediately think of Seattle. And that's the same reaction Nissan wants consumers to have as it launches the 2012 Versa sedan. I only mention the sedan because Nissan won't introduce a new version of the hatch for 2012, but it should get updated the following year. Interestingly, the hatch has outsold the sedan in the U.S., but Nissan believes that trend will reverse, which is why the sedan is coming out first. It's built on Nissan's new V platform, which uses 20% fewer components and weighs 150 pounds less than the previous platform. And under the hood, the Versa comes with a brand new powertrain. The 2012 Versa features our brand new 1.6 liter engine coupled with our second generation continuously variable transmission. All that means is it's a much more fuel efficient car, less CO2. Our miles per gallon, we had 38 in the highway, 30 around the city, 33 combined. So it's a great vehicle for everyday use. Customers also get the option to mate the engine to a five-speed manual, which gets 27 miles per gallon in the city and 36 on the highway. Overall, it's not very powerful with just 109 horsepower, but it's good enough while out on the road. The exterior has been completely redone, but it also hints at what Nissan's cars will look like in the coming years. What you're seeing here is really our, our signature. It's going to be the sedans of our future. Uh, the grille shape, the vehicle itself, from the old car, we're about an inch and a half shorter in height, much more sleek aerodynamic form itself. Uh, we actually shrunk the front end, overhangs a little bit, and the, and the back we put extra, almost two and a half inches of additional trunk space. It's got the largest interior volume of any vehicle in this class. The rear seat's huge. There is plenty of legroom in the back, but the headroom wasn't quite as spacious. The Versa sedan goes on sale in early August with a starting price just under $11,000 with a five-speed manual. And the top trim model starts at just over $15,500. Both prices do not include destination charges. Thanks for that report, Seamus. Hey, don't forget to join us tonight for AutoLine After Hours. We'll have Jay Barron from the Center for Automotive Research coming on. And if you have any questions about electric cars, especially the Nissan LEAF, we've got Mark Perry who handles all those questions for the company in North America. Join me and Peter DeLorenzo, the auto extremist, for the best insider discussion of what's going on in the industry. And that's today's show. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.